going to show you some of the badges, service badges and things I've got from family members who were in the military. Both these belong to the same person originally. Nice little case on this. It's actually a medal for uh, marksmanship from my grandfather's grandfather. And he was awarded this at Wimbledon in England, which at the time was a rifle range for the British Army. Let's take it out of this case. There's a, a bowman here and a rifleman there. 1300 to 1500 and 1860 beside the rifleman. And on the back side it's the National Rifle Association 1860. And along the edge it's got a drum major McGuire. September 1874, and that's the date it was awarded to him. Got a blue ribbon, and a large pin for attaching to your tunic, I guess. I believe it's a bronze metal. It's pretty nice though. And this one for long service in the volunteer force. And nothing on here but I was told by my grandpa's brother that it was awarded to the same person his grandfather. There's Queen Victoria on the back side of the medal. Victoria Regina. It's pretty nice. This is my own case, it's uh, not original. So that's the two oldest ones I've got. This little velvet case here holds a picture of my grandmother's father. There he is in uniform, and uh, I remember her telling me years ago that he served in India at one time. I think he was with the artillery, the Royal Artillery. Not, not too good of a quality of picture, it's quite old. Kind of worn. He's wearing his pillbox hat. I believe he moved his family to Canada in 1907. And they settled on uh, some 
CPR land in Saskatchewan near Moose Jaw. It was when they were divvying out the uh, sections of land to immigrants. As long as they could produce something off the land, I think they could keep it and stay there. So he farmed and uh, he had been a mason in England originally. So he was a skilled, uh, skilled tradesman as well. He ended up being kicked by one of his horses and uh, wasn't too old, but he left 11 children. So it was pretty hard times for them. I think my grandma was the uh, third, third up from the youngest. So a bunch of sisters and three brothers, I believe. My dad's father, and the, I've got a picture, a couple of pictures of him in a box, and I can't find the box, so all the medals and things were in the same, in a little safe, so I've got all them. My dad gave me these uh, years ago, and they were mini the mini service medals. I don't know when they started producing the little medals, but uh, or how old they are, doesn't really matter. They were his dad, so that's all that matters. His dad was from Scotland originally, so was my dad, and um, he didn't come out of the first war very well. He he was sick for a long time after. And, eventually died when my dad was only five years old, so I don't remember exactly what was wrong with him. In pretty rough shape, apparently. Here's the miniature of the war medal and the Great War for Civilization, which is inscripted on the back. The Great War for Civilization 1914 to 1914 to 1918. George V, King. I also have uh, my dad's dad's dog tag. I don't know what the material is. It has his name, it's a uh, number, 28th Gurk Company, Royal Fusiliers, PRS, which I don't know what that means, and blank on the other side. And I think the string my dad put on there a long time ago, it's not original. And then the next ones are my grandfather's on my mom's side. And they're the majority of what I have. He served in World War I and he was, I guess, a volunteer in the uh, Second War because I found this one. Saskatchewan Veterans Civil Security Corps. I know he was a quartermaster at the uh, base in Moose Jaw. But in World War I, he was attached to uh, a unit from Winnipeg, which was formed in Winnipeg. 
183rd Battalion of the Overseas Battalion and the nickname of the unit was uh, the Manitoba Beavers. This is the cap badge and one collar badge. Manitoba Beavers 183 Overseas Battalion, Canada. Now they shipped out in 1916 and as soon as they reached uh, England they were basically disbanded and became part of the 144th Battalion which uh, was actually the Winnipeg Rifles. A lot of those units that went over initially as part of the Canadian Expeditionary Force were absorbed by the other units as uh, reinforcements because the losses were so high at the time. And he was a sergeant in the machine gun corps, so there was his old cap badge there. See some repairs he had done one point, soldered the back. It's probably my favorite badge of his. And there's a button service at the front. It unscrews at the back and Clip onto your jacket. He used to wear it on his uh, Legion jacket. And there's some service medals with ribbons. And there's two missing, which I can't, don't know what they are, but I remember my grandmother telling me I think one of my cousins had come to her house at some time and Somehow got them out of her. I can remember him getting ready to go to the Legion functions or wherever when they wore all their gear. And remember that sound. There's the Great War for Civilization. Um, voluntary Service. 1939 to 1945. 1939 to 45 war medal. And Queen Elizabeth's coronation. I'd like to find out what other two should be there and then replace them. There's a little maple leaf badge. Would have worn that on their collar. I got an old picture of my grandpa in uniform and it's dated 1915 before he shipped out of Canada. And there was a badge on one arm in the picture and I could never figure out what it was and then digging through this stuff one day, I came across this because he was in, uh, he was a sergeant in the machine gun corps. It's a, the Leafs and then uh, MG. That's what it was. There's 
There's the other one, the other arm. And I take the split pins to hold them in. And there was a cloth patch in there, but which they would have worn once they got into action because uh, these things catch the sun, metal badges that catch the sun, so they went to cloth patches. I don't know if this was actually his or he just kept it in with his stuff from somewhere else, but just the one anyway. Canada one with the split pin. It's probably for the shoulder. Top of the shoulder. I don't know if it was World War One or two. And in amongst this stuff I found some old pictures which nobody could ever identify. I don't know who they are. This guy on a dispatch bike. That's a backdrop hung up behind him, so he was definitely posing for that picture. It says on the back, uh, Something Dispatch Rider, 7th Battalion. Can't read that. And then France, now in RAF. So. Well, him. And then there's another guy. Jack Bam. Jack Bamman, France, 1917. I don't know if they're friends of my grandpa's or uh, anyway. And then my grandpa's brother also served in World War One. He gave me these badges. He sent them over from Northampton one year. I never did meet him personally. He lived in England, but this one here says on war service, 1914. Now, I know he served aboard ship, but um, not sure if he was a merchant marine or actual navy. But I know he sent me this badge of his. The Mine Clearance Service. And that's what he did at the end of the war. They were going up and down the English Channel. Clearing out the mines that had been laid by the British and the Germans. And they would have worn this on their bottom of their sleeve. I think on their left sleeve of their tunic. And this was uh, pretty short-lived. Then they went to a cloth patch. That's kind of a neat one. He was 10 years younger than my grandpa, so he was fairly young in the First War. He would have been born in, uh, he would have been born in 1899, so. And then, uh, there's my dad's RAF cap badge from World War II. I got some pictures of him too at the air base in Moose Jaw during the war. 
where he came over from Scotland to train with the RAF. And it's in a box that um, I haven't come across yet. And one of my uncles gave me this years ago. Canadian Tank Corps, I guess. Cap badge. He only made it as far as Texas, and then uh, they were supposed to get shipped out from there. And they dropped the A-bomb on Japan, and that was the end of the war, so they didn't go anywhere. Set back to Canada. It's a neat one too. And then in uh, World War II, gr my grandpa was a quartermaster in the King's Own Rifles. This is a cap badge and two collar badges he had. I put them in this box. Put battle honors on each deal here. Bashendale, Somme, 1916, Hill 70, Blancien, Eeps, 1917, Canal de Nord, Vimy, 1917. Amiens. Ancre. Those are nice ones, too. All my uh, family members that were veterans were all in the Legion at one time. And my grandpa was no exception. He was big time into it. This this ribbon here is from a convention in uh, Winnipeg. Canadian Legion of the British Empire Service League, Ninth Dominion Convention, Winnipeg, Manitoba, May 24th to 27th, 1942. There's the British Empire Service League, the patch. Two small uh, British Empire Service League badges. This one here is a past president medal. British Empire Service League Canada or Canadian Legion. It's a nice one. Uh, w. McGuire Couchin, BC, number 53, 1952 to 53. And he was presented that in 1957. This one here is a past commander, zone counselor. Another nice looking one. W. McGuire, Couchin, and Mid Island Zone Pacific Command. Those are nice. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Enjoyed looking at some of these old military badges and Legion memorabilia. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.